Welcome to Dark City Radio. Um, tonight we've decided to open the chat up for anyone that wants to come in and have a rant. Um, or even put some questions across, or your own point of view, or how you've seen the system, what you're doing to challenge it. And we've, we've already got a couple of guests lined up ready for tonight. Um, first of all, I was going to bring in a guy called Vin James who's been doing a lot of active work looking into uh, law and remedies surrounding this legal system, which I'm a great fan of looking into this stuff myself. So um, over to you, James. Um, would you like to explain um, where you're from? And we'll, we'll take it from there. Uh, yeah, hello, Dom. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, Thanks for inviting me on. And uh, well, I mean, I think a lot of people already know me anyway from from uh, me working on Awake Radio. I do a show on there every Sunday and Thursday night. And uh, my approach that I I tend to use is I learn the way Mark Stevens has dealt with uh, the courts over the last few years. And a lot of what I do is based off of basically what he wrote about in his book. And what he's done to date in terms of, you know, showing how, how you can actually go about exposing the system for what it is. And um, what, is, it, what is the Mark Stevens approach? Because <laughs> everyone's got their different angle on how to take tackle this legal system. So what, what, what does he say about how to deal well, with it? The best quote to, to explain it is those that um, attack the rationale of the game and not the players are its most formidable adversaries. So basically... What you're doing is you're challenging or, uh, and you're exposing the fact that they don't have any facts beyond any of the claims they ever make. So you're just attacking the um, the facts of the issue. So when you're talking about law or, or um, you know any any type of claim they're going to bring against you, whatever they claim, you just accept it. If they want to accuse you, don't say you did wrong. Fine, okay. Now present the facts to me. And basically. The, the, the best way to approach this is, is obviously you never ask a question of your uh, you never ask a, a bureaucrat bureau, sorry get out of minute lose my voice you never ask a bureaucrat a question that you don't already know the answer to so if you're going to be asking these people for facts you know what the facts are yourself first That's and then you know what should be coming so that way you're always five or six steps ahead of these people whenever you you know you taking them on in court. Well, I made that same statement myself today. I was uh, saying most of the time when I do ask people questions, it's not generally because I want to um, find the answer. I, I'm, I want to see what other people's points of view are and how they see it rather than... Um, like I've already got my answer for the question that I'm asking, especially in these legal situations. And um, sometimes that, that can get you in, into trouble asking these, these questions. But you, you've been saying that you've been having or you've seen success with some of these processes, which are... We have been, yeah. I mean, Mark has had a lot of success over in, in America. That's where he's based. Um, and he's helped people get off of tax uh, cases where the IRS has been trying to come after them drinking tax and house tax uh, their their you know their equivalents where counter tax um and just recently this week we had a uh, a ticket a parking ticket i know it's only pet your parking ticket but we had a parking ticket dropped using one of these um motions to dismiss you know dismiss the case and uh, the council obviously read it didn't want to play and decided to drop drop the claim i know that's only a petty issue but the fact is is that regardless of whether it's a park ticket or whether they're having any for speeding or something else as long as it's victimless they never have a bad claim against you basically so the same grand stand for a parking ticket as it would for, for just about anything else they come up with when they're trying to come up, come after your income tax or council tax the same rules and make it, you know, the same principles apply regardless across the board so these these rules that they try and imply on people such as parking tickets and the rest of it <laughs> is there a certain procedure you do like serving paperwork or anything like well, that yeah we we, we just use a simple motion to dismiss. Um, in this country, it's called an application. That's what they just changed the terms for. That was done during the war for reforms back in uh, 2001, I believe. But basically, it, it just lays out a case law the states for there to be a valid claim against somebody. For us to be what's called injury, it, it them, which means injury and, in, injury and damage. 
secrets are essentially the rest of the victim, even with something as petty as a parking ticket. Now, here's the thing about when they claim there's a victim. One can be an actual real victim, a real person, and the other one can be something called an abstraction, i.e. the public or society. It doesn't matter which, but there has to be a victim according to their system. So that's what we use against them. If they claim the victim, i.e. under a public talk with a parking ticket, the public is the victim, one then show us facts proving that. And this is where it all falls apart for them, because a lot of these alleged crimes only exist in their heads. They're not real crimes. You know, they're just something that, yeah, it's just an opinion in their, in their head. There's nothing tangible behind it for them to back it up. So that's what we do. We, we forensically pick it apart, the claim they're making against you, and, and expose the fact they've got nothing behind the claims they're making other than they're simply just making an accusation and there's nothing else behind that. And what we do is we attack the cause of action or if it's criminal, it means the same thing, a charge, a criminal charge, or, or it's a specific cause of action. We challenge that. We challenge the jurisdiction of the court. They did have jurisdiction because they, they can't have it unless there is a valid claim against them. Okay, um, so um, how, how do you challenge jurisdiction to a court? Well, basically, we ask them, has there been a valid cause of action filed? And if they claim yes, well, then lay it on the table, tell us how many elements are present and where are they in the complaint. Well, and if they can't in, produce that, well, then how can they claim to have jurisdiction when they can't even show there's a valid claim in front, in front of them? For instance, if there was a, a case that the courts are holding in the public, how would they um, challenge the jurisdiction to to prove or, or to hold it in a private? I, I don't really get involved in all that with regarding the private and the public. I mean, at the end of the day, when you, when you put nine times out of ten, most people end up in front of the magistrate anyway. They yeah. don't let you know whether it's pub, public or private. Usually it is, I can see why people claim it's private because it's not being recorded. It's within four walls with maybe a few witnesses watching, but generally kept out of, out of public eye because none of it's being recorded and none of it's actually being made available to the public. You know, in terms of, you know, the community, you know, anyone from the community wanted to go in there and, and, and listen and know what happened. But the thing is, it's... When it, when it... Well, I mean, when it's public, is the victim the public or is the victim somebody private? So right. usually when it's a criminal offence, they claim it's a crime against all society. So what claiming is... Is that it's this abstraction from the public that's the victim. Okay. So when they're claiming this jurisdiction, there has to be a valid claim in front of them. And this is what we did. We, we did research, um, finding the case law stated that for there to be a valid claim against somebody, injury up and damn them, has to be present without those two elements being present. You don't have a valid claim against anybody. Therefore, the court won't have jurisdiction because the court can only have jurisdiction pr- to, at least to begin with, to, to, to only just hear the case. Right. And if let's, there's no bad claim in front of them, then they don't have jurisdiction to hear the case in the first place. Let, let's take, for example, right, and because um, I, I totally see where you're coming from. In, within a courtroom, uh, if you're making claims, uh, you've, you've got to be able to prove these claims. And mm-hmm. uh, most of the claims that they're making are built upon this whole game of wizardry in the courtrooms with their, their magic that they use within their books and they've studied it for years but on, on the reality of it in the, the physical world um, somebody driving along the, the motorway um, speeding the fence nobody's actually harmed so there is no injured party it would just be about commerce but even if you were um, saying well you're making these claims the procedure is they still take your vehicle, take it to court, and um, do what they do. This, this is one of the problems that I, I've been seeing time and time again. Even though nobody's committed any harm and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, well, it's the thing with, with what Mark does and with what I try and help show people. We're, we're not offering anybody solutions or remedies in the sense of, you know, we can show you what you can say in court to get you off there's no guarantee you're going to win with um you know using any of this stuff in, you know in terms of uh, you know getting the case dropped against you there is no winning as far as we're concerned but what you can do is just because 
we, we know in advance that they've already predetermined you guilty just simply based on the fact you've been accused. And we know that it's impossible and we can't possibly get a fair hearing before we even walk in there. We expose that. So even if they are going to screw you over in the court and, and find you guilty anyway, in spite of everything you do, you've at least set the grounds to hopefully get it overturned on appeal because what you're doing is you're just trying to put them in a position where they're showing their true colours. And so when it gets to the appeal stage, some judge is going to have to read that and go, oops, how are we going to dig our way out of this and make it look good? Because the pretense that they put up they're legitimate is the only thing that's really important to them. Everything else they couldn't care less about. I don't care less about justice, fairness, any of that. What they do care about is the is is this facade they put up to make it look legitimate. And if that's not to to, to um, you know get get rocked, then they get worried. And then that's usually the situation you can put them in where they're gonna say, Well, to save face we'll soon drop the case or we're just gonna act like the little tyrants we are. And we couldn't care less. Well, uh, we're, we're throwing a book at you regardless. Either way, they're not making it look good. Yeah, well, this so is... It's um, a matter of which one, which one are they going to give. Usually, we'd sooner have them give up the pretense of looking good and just drop the case against you, other than going all the way and saying, well, that's it, we couldn't care less. We're going to spit our dummies at you. And, uh, you know, they're, when they're going to get violent, we're hoping they, they're going to they're drop one of them. Yeah. Usually, we, yeah, we hope they're going to drop the violence and not going to, you know, continue to pursue it. They'll, they'll, they'll just sooner drop a case, drop, drop a case against you, and go after somebody else who's going to be an easy target. But I mean, you're just getting a judge to to admit who they represent when you go to court, even a magistrate. People saying, "Well, you can't do that to a magistrate because in this country, you know, they, they volunteer, they don't take away from the crown and all that." But who do I swear? To, who do I swear allegiance to? In spite of that, that's it. In crown. Yeah. If they work if it's for the crim- Crown, the prosecution works for the Crown, the defence works for the Crown, then it's surely... That's it's where it has allegiance to the Crown, yeah. I mean, if they tell us, well, we don't, we don't take a wage, it's like, yeah, but you swear allegiance to the Crown, and how do your expenses get paid for anyway if you wasn't taking money out of our pocket still? Yeah, it's still right. within your interest to, to find people and, and, and convict them, because otherwise you don't get your expenses paid. So that raises the presumption of a conflict of interest. And, and just, just exposing something like that gets them really upset. But at the end of the day, you're just showing the obvious. And, and this, is a, this is basically how we challenge you. And, uh, you know, let's say you, we, we go after the cause of action, the conflict of interest, the jurisdiction. It's, whatever they want to claim, just accept it in the sense of if they want to say they have jurisdiction, okay, fine. Now give me the facts. I'll believe you. Just give me the facts. So you're not putting yourself in a position where you're claiming, no, you haven't got jurisdiction because of this. You're saying to them, okay, well, I'll accept it. Now just give me the facts. So you're not putting yourself in an adversarial position with them. You're you're, you're coming across as meek and mold and you're just asking them questions and you're not getting argumentative with them. Because that's what they'll start accusing you of. The moment you start asking these questions, they'll start saying, you're arguing with us. And another thing, have you seen that document that's flying about? You know, it was something like 185 pages uh, by a Canadian judge, Meads versus Meads. That's right, yeah, I've, I've read a bit of that, yeah. Which is um, going into near enough all these processes that many of us are looking into and um, tries to tear them apart one by one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 that goes to show the attitude they have towards this sort of thing. Whether the free man stuff is right or wrong is irrelevant. It's just the fact that this is their opinion. They couldn't care less what we've got to say when, when, when we go to court. They couldn't care less what our opinions are. Yep. And it doesn't matter whether we're in the right or not. So, let's say, this is the approach we use because we know that it doesn't matter what we believe. It doesn't matter what our opinions are. It doesn't matter. We know they're corrupt and that they're bent. It's not going to help us. What is going to help us is getting them to admit it. Do you think we're going to... Do you think you'll, you'll see any kind of um, change within the governmental ranks with what's going on in the world at the moment? I think we are. We're starting to see. I mean, even with the people using all, all these various methods, we are getting their, their cages rattled. It really is starting to, to worry them. And I mean, I've seen certain documents that a friend sent me a little while ago where they're starting to, starting to say, you know, we need to rebuild our credibility again. 
this is what certain people within within the justice system and, and the government are actually saying. They they know that like, they're losing their credibility with 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 the community at large. You know, people aren't believing a word they're saying anymore, and then the, you know, the mask is slipping, and they know it. So we are we are rattling the right people in that sense, and they are starting to get worried. So the sort of changes we're going to see come about, I, I just don't know. It's going to be in patches and it's going to be in bits and pieces. But I think the thing that they're more scared about is the internet. The fact is, is that in spite of every other method they've of control they've tried to use over us, especially with media, um, the internet is the one thing they can't really control. It's an entity all its own. In, in, in oh, I, I, I disagree yeah. because um, with many of these truths that we look into, how many of them are, is knowledge that you've looked up online, which is could have been created by a think tank to control their agenda and push it in whatever direction they want anyway? Oh, absolutely, yeah. And I think that's probably 90% of a lot of the, the, the information that gets thrown around in the, uh, in the truth movement. But you've got to be able to learn to separate the wheat from the chaff. The thing is with, with this is but it's learning how to think and not what to think. And we've spent all our lives being programmed by these people, trying to make us um, believe what they want us to believe instead of actually thinking for ourselves and working it out for ourselves. And this is why I like Mark's approach so much, because he's found that way of, of looking at the world a lot more clearly and, and not letting um, a lot of this abstract and fictional thought get in the way. You know, and, and you can see past that. So regardless of what nonsense might be thrown about on the internet, if you just stick to the basics and you just stick to the facts, it doesn't matter what else. You, and, and it's, and it's a, a brilliant filter for, for, for getting past all that stuff. So I mean, a lot of these people who I've been talking to, especially in the last couple of weeks online, talking about a lot of these so-called free man methods and claiming that they're sovereigns. And, um, you know, if you go in a court and you serve this paperwork and you serve that paperwork, it's going to work wonders for you. None of it matters at the end of the day. Cause, I mean, I've got experience myself of dealing with these people in court, and you know, many other people who's a part of this group, you know, the No State Project group, and you know, we can, you know, we we know we know what we're, whether we're dealing with some factual, whether it's, it's something that's just, just complete nonsense. Well, that's, that's the it, thing. Yeah, you, know, you see many videos and and things out there, and um, yeah. I've described it before, like a a soldier that goes out to war, um, when he comes back with his arms and legs blown off, he's labelled as a hero. And it's like if somebody goes out, does something under the label of freemanism or whatever, um, and, and doesn't succeed, they're given a rub on the back and you've done really well. And it's like classed as a free man hero. It's same as a soldier. You've had your arms and legs blown off, literally, by the system, and patted on the back. And I just don't get it. It's um, I, I went and tried a lot of them processes out, and um, it will or, or can then end you up in in prison. Um, you can have yeah. your car taken off you. You can have your home taken off you. Um, that, and the reason that um, I try out my processes, as I say time and time again, it probably won't work for the next man because I don't claim to own anything. So if I don't own anything. Then what have they? What can they take from me? And if they put me in jail, great. I've got a captive audience to teach what I know. But I do know myself that people yeah. are waking up tenfold to this legal solutions that are going on. Whatever angle people are taking it from, whether the courts are acting honourable or not, people are waking up and standing up to the system by the rules that they've built on black and white on pieces of paper that are enslaving people, people are actually standing up to this now and going, I don't have to put up with it anymore. And when there is a, a, a critical mass of people that are not doing it, they'll realise that literally it'll be your next door neighbours are not doing it and it'll be the odd one or two that won't conform to the system and things could carry on pretty damn good then. That's right. I mean, look at what happened to Northern Ireland. Um, no, sorry, not Northern Ireland. What happened in Ireland um, last year where you had at least 50% of the population point blank refuse to pay their um, to pay their, their, their version of the council tax. That's what we need over here. So it just goes to show that, you know, people are waking up to this en masse and we've had half the population of a particular, uh, you know, country in brackets um, uh, do that to the government. So it just goes to show that, you know, people can... Um, 
actively start to really, really make a, a difference regarding this stuff now, whether they're involved in any of this stuff or not. You know, the, the thing is with, with the government is they've been getting away with this crap for so long. They've become so arrogant that they think they can pull any any amount of uh, nonsense over us now. I think they can pull our, pull our eyes, uh, uh, you know, pull them all over our eyes. Um, they've lost touch with the fact that, you know, people are waking up to this now. And, you know, the, the, that's the great thing about the internet. Most, most things now, when, everyone, when, it, when anybody gets screwed over by the system in some way, shape, or form, they're straight on the internet looking, looking for something on it. Oh, you know, um, and, and then that's it. As soon as you start looking up law or anything like that, there on the internet, even if, you, even if you've never heard of this stuff, bang, it all starts to, it all starts to spring up in front of you, doesn't it? See, so one thing I thing. hate, it, one thing I hate is the paperwork, and um, I don't have to do much of it often. But a lot of people ask me to look into paperwork for them. And um, yeah. the, the other night, uh, literally a few nights ago, I had to look into a lot of paperwork, something that's not even of my field, to do with bailiffs and everything. And um, it, it was fun to look into law again and have a look at the way the legal system sort of like tries to enslave people. And and it is done literally by just a body of words and who's going to hold liability. Like there's a very interesting part for bailiffs because bailiffs are not allowed to use reasonable force, but the client can authorise the bailiff to use reasonable force, but he doesn't, he doesn't um, have the power to instruct the bailiff to use such force. So that's where he can authorise, and this is what I was explaining to the locksmith. I said, look, I could authorise you to go and strangle that man, but that's, that's not me empowering you to do it. Only you can do that because then you're left with the liability. And the locksmith was like near enough instant saying, well, I'm, I'm not going to do the locks. And that was it. It was game over for the bailiffs. The bailiffs like tried to walk onto the land, and it's like, no, you'll be done for trespassing. The police had already turned up and walked away. So um, that that was the end of that situation. But in all um, what I've seen, these these bailiffs, they're they're relentless. The whole system, it's a machine, and they're relentless, and they don't give up. They keep coming back and keep coming back, keep coming back. So that's right. Yeah. What, what is the the bigger solution rather than looking at it from? Well, I, I don't see a solution as such in in terms of you know we can find a way to beat these people on on those terms. The only thing these we're dealing with psychopaths at the end of the day. We have to understand the enemy we're dealing with. The majority of these people are psychopaths, and the only thing that psychopaths fear is simply being exposed. That's the only thing that they, they're scared of. They're not scared of anything else. Nothing else bothers them. But they do. They are afraid of being exposed. And that's all we need. That's all we need to use. And that's the, it's the most powerful tool we've got. And it's, it's the only one we need. And that's absolutely, you know, it's, it's just a matter of it. We've got to expose them. And once we start exposing them, they're topple under their own weight. We don't need to bring them down. The system of collapsing on itself. It's on its way to doing that now, as we know. How long it'll take, I don't know. Whether it'll happen in my lifetime, I've no idea. Well, but, look, looking you know, at but, um, figures and statistics, um, I'm surprised that uh, the collapse is not all around us at the moment. But, well, this is the thing. They like to keep us frightened, and I don't believe, in all honesty, they're going to collapse the economy the way it's being claimed. Because if you look back in history, when similar things have happened, whenever, these, whenever the economy has totally crashed, the banks had to write off billions of debt to people. They had to write, you know, they had to write that money off. So that's it. We've got wipe, wipe, wipe the slate clean. They certainly don't want to do that with us this time. They want to keep people on that, that um, treadmill of debt and keep owing them. So I don't see them. Cr- uh, creating a situation where they're actually going to collapse the economy. All they're going to do is they're just going to keep making everything else more expensive all the time. And let our standard of living is just going to keep dropping. Everything's going to become more expensive to us and life's just going to become miserable and a lot harder. Well, that, but I don't see them actually collapsing the economy and because, because that would cause, I'll say that would, have to, that would have to cause them to start writing off huge amounts of debt and I don't want to do that because if they keep us in debt, they keep us believing their bits of paper and money, 
They've got us under control, and that's exactly where they want us. It's all about control. That's it. Well, this is it. And um, the, the stories I'm hearing of what they're doing within the system, like taking people's benefits away when they are obviously sick, um, there's another step that is apparently trying to be enforced in, in London benefits agencies where they want to give you a card and you get your benefits sent to a card and they allocate a certain amount to certain shops and uh, you, you're, you know I mean you can't go out of your, your brackets and your budget you have to stick to what you're told you're going to spend it on and this is turning into more of an Orwellian Dracon, uh, draconian state day by day mm -hmm. and, and people are not um, questioning it enough in my opinion but like then again on the other hand people are doing a lot more recently is what I'm seeing so I don't know what what is going to go on and what the future holds same so, again yeah. But, I mean, a lot of this stuff that's being thrown about, about what's going to happen. I mean, look all the stuff that was leading up to the Olympics and then all the stuff that was leading up to the up to 2012, you know, the, the 21st and all that. It all turned out to be a... Nothing happened, did it? It all well, passed without incident as far as we could tell. So, well, this know, is what I'm saying. I think most truths or what people are looking into from truth circles and things like that, most of it is written by the powers that be, to send people looking in different directions and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so to divert your attention away from what works really, yeah, from what's right in front, yeah. And it's See, and like I say, this is why I stick to Mark's stuff in terms of, you know, the way I've learned to look at the world, because all he does, he just sticks to the facts. I mean, when you start looking at the government, politicians, nations, states, all that, once you actually know factually what it really is, you don't get sucked in anymore by a political ball. All this stuff about, you know, sovereignty and you live within a state and you live within a, within a country and you're a citizen and all this stuff. You know that it's complete, it's complete nonsense, but it's true. And you can prove it not to be true. That's the difference. So, you know, it's, um, I'll say, this is what they don't want people. It's like George Carlin said, what they don't want people who are awake, you know, people who are awake and wise and, um, you know, can think critically. They just want people clever enough to run the machines, but too dumb to realise how, how badly they're getting screwed over. And that's and the situation they want to keep us in. A couple of thugs at the top that will publicly beat people every now and again just to show control over the masses. Um, we're yeah. going to go to a tune um, any minute now, and after we've, we've played a tune, we're going to bring a couple more guests on, but I'd like you to stay on if you can, Vin. Sure, yeah, mate, thanks. All right, Vin, so uh, what we're going to do is go into a tune right now and uh, come back in five minutes. We need emotional content. To you. Yo, it feels good, fam. Yeah, like heavenly glory. Put the mind aside with the story. Be the author, source of all present. Listen from within, yo, it ain't always pleasant. It's always the truth, untampered or pure. Not dressed up bullshit and pampered galore. Mind is a tool, use it wisely. And know when that talk is yours or outside these subliminal programs inside me. Wanna be heard first and shout loudest to guide me. I am observes me. Back to homeostasis to feel if it serves me. Proceeding wisdom, understanding arrives. The truth speaks through us. Just listen, but why? Take that extra few seconds, see what appears to you. Then ask yourself, how did it feel to you? Let me think. Don't think. Pointing away to the moon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory. Don't think too. What you feel is real, it ain't potential. That's just clay. What do you shape it into? We're scoped by our responses to the things we've been through. Without our permission, there isn't anything they can do. We decide on our own what drives us, lies in our scores, what affects us in our directions, unless we accept them. So wherever we end up will not be their fault. Take responsibility for your conductivity. It is you who reacts when you're stimulated by energy. So before you act, consider the fate of your decision tree. 
me The consequences may be a principally painful memory You know when something isn't right You feel it, that sense excites The true nature of things appears clearly to end sight You can lie to the mirror, but not to what gives it light What you feel is as quick as light Experiences ignite and rise explode Both receiving and sending signals of light Jackal first born cosmic made mass We are the gods that shape us But they take us In the illusion of inherited dreams Hemmed into the formula of beggars and kings When nothing's what it seems Kept possessed by theft Like the contradictions of sacred texts My thoughts fragment like a cyrus In self-fulfilling cycles From the ghettos to the grove Programmed for ego and violence I know the war is being fought In our mind not a road So I connect with a silence Deep inside of me Cleanse myself still of greed and pretense In this chaos that we're living in I see my shadow try to tempt me every single day But I've forgiven him Cause that's how I feel Your heart will always tell you what's real How did it feel to you? Everything Don't think Everything Don't think Feel It is like a finger pointing away to the moon Don't concentrate on the finger Or you will miss all that heavenly glory That it feel to you. Do you understand? That's it. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Yeah, tonight I've uh, decided to open it up. Uh, decided to open it up to everyone to have a call in. And tonight, Vin James has come on from the No State Project. And we're going to bring in a couple more guests. But just to cap it off with Vin, you you would say to people in these legal situations, uh, on a basic note, to not make any claims. And if they made claims, get them to prove them. That's right. Yeah, I mean, don't take a position yourself against them. Don't don't, don't accuse them of anything. And don't make any statements yourself. Um, and you just basically go after them for facts. And the most simple thing you can challenge them on regarding uh, you know, facts whenever they bring the claim against you, usually, especially if it's, if it's a, stat- a statutory offence, um, what facts do they rely on to prove that the statute applies to you or the code applies to you, as, as we say. Um, and that's it. It's what facts they rely on to prove it even applies. And the reason you ask that is, is because... It's not enough for them just to read from the act and say, well, there you go, it says so in the act. Before you even read from it, prove it applies to me first. You wouldn't slap a Bible down in front of somebody and say, you're a Christian because that book says so. But wouldn't it be sensible to say, to them, what facts have you got that that book even applies to me before you even accuse me of being a Christian? You know, it's just a label you're putting on me and you're saying just because that book says so, that makes me something. You know, you'd ask first, we'll prove that that book even is applicable to me first. Then you can read from it all you like. So recently so with this parking ticket, what was the actual process that, that was used? Did it go to court or was a parking ticket order sent to a house? What actually happened? It was a parking ticket that was, was you know, I think it was, it was sent through the post. We used one of Mark template letters it was one that i adapted slightly because um because obviously we deal with parking tickets and you have to go through councils with that so you're not in a court situation as such um or you, you know it's not like in, in america where you can go straight to court with a parking ticket um i slightly adapted it and i just um i added a little bit of extra substance in there just just to beef it up a little bit and uh, you know to explain what the the, the basic app was about you know explaining the case law and why it says what it says, and um, that was it. And they just they just dropped the ticket. Now we, I've used a lot of these myself in the past, and they they'll just outright reject you. So it doesn't matter what you use against them; they'll just reject it, even when you're even when that that application is actually bomb proof. I can't argue it. Uh, but this is the first time we've had someone. Uh, it was a new one. I wrote it a few weeks previous. Um, it's first time I've had, had, had a council just 
drop it there and then and not, not try and argue it. So um, it was, like I say, it was founded off one of Mark's motions. He, he's written a UK version for us, and uh, you can get that off his website, off his shop, off his shop link. And um, that was it. They just like they, they just dropped it. What it states is that there's, they're not a true adversary, and it states the case law and what you know what 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 that means. Um, they haven't stated an injury. He added some extra parts in there, claiming that. They've not proved applicability of the law and they've not proven that the vehicle was physically present within the borough they claim it was in, or the county, whichever, you know, whichever allegedly they call it. Um, because your physical presence um, in a borough or county um, isn't actually true, you know, it isn't something that can, that can actually exist because a borough or a county is nothing more than a piece of paper, it's a statute. That's what created it. So how can they claim your car was physically present within a borough for that alleged borough to come after you for that ticket? And that was one of the main points we put in there as well, and they can't prove that. I was on a call the other day to uh, my local council dealing with a, a, a parking ticket, and um, the chap said to me, I said to him, are you telling me that you've got facts proving that my car was physically present within the, within the borough? And he said, yeah, he goes, we've got a picture of your car. So I said to him, really? I said, are you telling me that you can actually see the borough in the picture you have that has my car in it? And he's trying to convince me, yeah, it has. You can see it. I said, I'll tell you what, just send me a picture of the borough and I'll believe you. Huh. And he could, oh, obviously, you know, throwing his toys out of the frame at that stage. But, but that's it. it and, and that was it. Like I said, we, I, I beefed it up a little bit, added a few extra little points. But that was basically it. We just laid out a case for stating these are the grounds on which you have to bring a valid claim against somebody according to your rules and regulations. Um, you've not done it. Um, and here's the case law that says you have to, sort of thing. Um, and that's basically it, you know. And as, as most people know, I've even had people from the council come back at me and state this isn't true. They claim this isn't an adversarial system in the courts. Um, and what that means is, is uh, you know, for it to be adversarial, you have to be presumed innocent or not liable until proven otherwise. And it means that there has to be an accusing party, and that accusing party has to be asserting the antagonistic or, or making the antagonistic assertion of a legal right. It means they have to claim you violated their right some, somehow, some way. Uh, so that's it. So you're the defendant, they're the claimant, the burden of proof lies with them. You don't have to prove the same thing. And that's where it lies. I say, and that all gets laid out in the motion and says, right, these are the grounds on which you people claim that your system is meant to operate. You failed to do that. So if you're going to ignore this, well, then we go to appeal and you're going to have to explain themselves. And that's basically where you leave it. It's the best, it's the best you can do. All you're doing is you're exposing the fact they haven't laid a valid claim against you. And you're using their opinions back against them to show why so sorry that's me waffling on a bit but <laughs> no 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 this, this is what it's all about is uh, trying to seek solutions to all this madness that's going on in the world that's it yeah and that, that's why I'll, I mean I'll... the way their system is... sorry Bob. no carry on I was going to say I mean the way their system is actually built and meant to but meant to work it's actually quite sensible to turn around and say that you can't have a valid claim against somebody unless there's a victim makes perfect sense, doesn't it? That's not unreasonable, is it? But then, obviously, that doesn't bring them any revenue in because if it was that, if they did keep it that simple, the way they claim, you know, they are, they are, they, you know, their, their legal system is meant to operate, well, then hardly anyone would ever be brought into court because, in truth, there's hardly ever any victims in this world in terms of, of the crimes they claim we, we're, we're committing. They, they, uh, there's never a real victim, except if there's, you know, actual real damage to somebody, you know, genuine real damage. You know, um, um, but, but, you know, most of the crimes they accuse us of all the time, they're always abstract crimes. They only ever exist in their heads. Um, I may as well... I may as well bring the other guests into the show. Uh, we've got Gail and John tonight, and uh, Gail's just typed into the room that 
she won a railway ticket two weeks ago. How did you win a railway ticket? Is that like a lottery ticket? No, I was just replying to what Bob had written. Hello, everybody, anyway. Uh, he wrote, I won a parking ticket eight weeks ago, so I replied with, I won a railway ticket. So that was just a, a notice to pay, which my daughter got for, uh, she lost the ticket and she hadn't been given the opportunity to even buy another one or anything. So she came home and then a couple of weeks later, we got a letter asking uh, 28 days saying it would go to the disposal of the magistrates, but you could fix this problem if you uh, pay £80 within 28 days plus the £2.30 train ticket. So I lost my temper a little bit. I said, you're not paying that £80 for the £2 ticket. So I wrote them a nice letter and uh, I told them that she didn't really commit a crime. She didn't make off without payment or intend to travel without a ticket. She just simply lost it. Uh, and I offered, I offered them £2.30, I signed a little pay slip, put £2.30 in it, made sure there was no room for them to fiddle it and put an eight in. Um, just sent it off, I asked them to reply within 28 days and if they hadn't, or if they found that £2.30 wasn't acceptable, then we turned that pay slip back to me and we'll take it from there. And I just by chance checked my bank account the other day and they've cashed the ticket, so uh, They've cashed that two pound thirty check, so I'm presuming it's uh, un undusted. What do you reckon, Vin? Well, if it worked, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things, you know. It, it, so. You know, she hasn't. They said you're guilty of uh, travelling with the intent of not of avoiding the fair and all this. So I've just yeah. disputed mm. that accusation only, and, you know, and. <laughs> Then if you well, what facts would they that it was intentional? I asked them to prove it simply, so I've had no reply, and they cashed the, the ticket, um, the cheque, uh, on the 4th of January, so they were pretty quick cashing it too, because they sent it in about 15th of December, so they didn't really take long to decide. Anyway, yeah. that's, that's, that's that on that anyway, yeah, Tom, so thanks for bringing me in with the little story about my daughter's bunking the train. I think she did. <laughs> you know what kids are like. Get you in all sorts of trouble. Yeah, I mean, it's happened to me before. I was, I was coming back from work, which was years ago, um, and I genuinely lost. It was during the summer, so I was wearing shorts. So I was working on a building site, so I was just wearing these shorts. And that, well, you know, shorts and a t-shirt, that was it. That's all I wore, wore, to, wore to work that day. And I genuinely lost the ticket. Fell out of my pocket. Must have done. You know, being short, so probably, you know, weren't particularly big pockets in them. And I genuinely lost the ticket. Um, but when I told the bloke, because I got out, you know, I was like, I'm ever sorry, mate, you know, I've, I've lost my ticket. He, he was sort of half and half whether he was going to, um, you know, try, try and get the old bill on me or, or just let us through in the end. He just went, I'll cut off. <laughs> Thank you. But he, he was treating me like I was a criminal, like I meant it deliberate, you know. But it's the thing with something like that, if they claim it was intentional, well, that's the accusations. So where are the facts that back that up? You know, they have to prove it was intentional. So are they experts in the um, in the workings of your mind to so know that you, you, know, you did? Yeah, so... Well, it's the fear they with as well, isn't it? If you just let go of the fear and confront, confront them, any of them, it's like tell you life with people as well when they come to your door and... You'd instantly feel terrified and your heart's thumping and you're like, I'm not answering the door, you know, if you genuinely haven't got one. <laughs> mm. But, you know, but the fear that people have got instilled into everyone, it's, you just grow up with it. It's like, oh, can't, got to have a tell you got to pay, pay if we've uh, parked on that yellow line or, oh, I've gone in a taxi line or, oh, when did they throw that bus lane off? They threw one up in the middle of Liverpool when no one was looking. Right through town, it was a freeway, and, and it just suddenly become a bus lane. And it was the only lane through town, and as soon as you're on it and you don't know it's a bus lane, you, you're penalised straight away. So everyone's filled with fear. You just and they pay, don't they? They'll just continue paying unless they drop the fear and yeah. you know ask them to prove it. Or you know, I'm not being that's, like that's I just. I just listen to guys like Dom and other people who I, I, I don't go out and practice what they say. 
you know, obviously because I'm not, I'm not as clued up, but I will take on board and, and use what I can that's uh, relevant to anything that's going on with me. Do you know what I mean? I think that's why I lost the fear with the railway people. I think after I got stung for 60 quid last year for going on the bus lane that I threw up, um, after that, I paid it, scared, I thought, oh, I can do, oh, oh, I can do without the headache. You know, most people go, just can't be doing with the trouble, pay it. But uh, it's thanks to the likes of Don where I've, I've just dropped the fear and confronted it, and lo and behold, <laughs> it bloody, you know, it bloody works. <laughs> if you're in the right to do, to do it, do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's right. I mean, it's the same with me. It has helped me uh, lose a lot of fear. Of them, but then again, I do know that these this this is how these people operate. They operate in coercion and violence, and it, it's you know you've got you've got to understand that you know underneath all that legal paperwork is a threat of violence. Or as Stefan Molyneux once said, you know, there's a gun underneath all that paperwork. You know, and what you've got to do is point out the gun in the room. This is what they're always trying to hide from us. They're always trying to pretend. Um, there is a violence behind this, you know, you've got you've got this obligation and, and if if it does get to the state, you know, you brought it upon yourself, you know, it's your fault. They always blame the victim for the violence they inflict on on the rest of us. Yeah. You know, it, it's but you've got you've got to recognise that that is a genuine threat. There there is, you know, it's not irrational to, to fear these people in that respect. Oh yeah. But yeah. you know, it's um You do but you've just got to you just have the strength in, inside to just to, to stand up with them, but do it right. Don't like mm. try and sort of fight them or argue with them. Let know your rights. No, people got to know your rights. I mean, I'm still learning. I'm just I'm learning a lot. By God, I, I, what I wanted to talk about. I know I don't want to sway off what you you guys are talking about, but. Can can we just go on to a little subject about fluoride for a moment, if it's okay? Please do. Please do. What I want to talk about is really, uh, well, there's a few things, but this this is a big issue for me, even though my child, she's grown up now, but I've got a lot of friends who've got kids. And uh, they've all been made to sign at school in juniors. I'm not sure if it's in two, it probably is. But they have to sign now, the parents have to sign for the, the school to give the baby, you know, the kids milk. You know, like when we were kids, we just got milk, little bottles of milk, didn't we, to drink. But now they're insisting that they give the kids flor- fluoridated milk, to get me. It's got fluoride in it. Now, if there's any truth in it being good for your bones, uh, why is it in 99% of antidepressants, to get me? This is true. This you can go and check it out anywhere online. I've already checked, uh, and, and we knew the history of fluoride as well. It was used in the concentration camp as so well. So they're, they're asking you as a parent to sign a, yeah. a, a form, a consent form to give that's the right. children milk whilst at school. Yeah, that's right. But uh, is that so? Is there a connection to the what is there? Because I've, I've not heard well, myself of fluoride in milk. That's it. That that is that's the problem. The fluoride. There, there's not. There's no reason whatsoever for fluoride to be in kids' milk. Have it they? Have doesn't, they? Doesn't, what pardon? does it does it say on their form that they want you to sign that uh, um, it, there's fluoride in this milk or where have you found that from? To be honest, I I I I, I haven't seen one. But my my neighbour has got two kids downstairs and he told me. You know that his bird, actually, um, his bird, his girl, his wife to be, has had to sign for them to give them milk, fluoride milk. So I am not. How, just, how do you know there's fluoride in it? That's, that's what we're know, asking. They're saying it's good for the teeth and the bones. This is you know they try to put it. They do do it in America. They put it in. They put it in. They, they put it in water in the supermarkets and then taking it off the shelves. Yeah, I know they put it in water, but. I've, I've never heard of them putting it in, in milk myself. So, um, what, have, well, have you found this to be evidence, or...? Yeah, this is true. OK, OK. I'm going to get shut down on the radio. I'm yeah. going to find a link to, to clarify this. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, you know, it's true. You have to sign. You ask anybody. Sorry. You ask anybody. You just dropped the keyboard. That was... Um, 
you ask anybody who's got children in juniors or, or, or infants about the milk they've had to sign a consent form for, uh, it just concerns me the connection between, well, sodium fluoride is one thing only, it's the main ingredient in rat poison. So, you know, why, it's, why, in a, why ever has it got to be in children's milk? And as it was used in the Second World War or in Coldest, or not Coldest, like in Auschwitz, as it was used in Auschwitz to dumb down and keep the people uh, suppressed and just not bothering, you know, like, uh, like I said before, they're in antidepressants, 99 of antidepressants have got fluoride in, right? I would go in, go off on a tangent about it calcifying the pineal gland or anything, but it, it dumbs you down, it keeps you, it keeps you calm, you know, and not bothered, not bothered to question anything. To let the police walk all over you, just just agree, basically roll over and obey the government. Do you know what I mean? It's just I'm not saying it's a big mad conspiracy or anything, but there is something wrong if they're putting it in children's milk and making a claim that it's good for the bones. Yeah, they're putting it in. Absolutely, yeah. There's no connection, and I have been to a physician. I've even I've got a doctor. You know, um, I go and see a doctor, and I have asked him about these tablets and I have pleaded with him to tell me why they're in both and he said to me, oh but we've got the FDA, the FDA wouldn't do that, they wouldn't do that and start scratching his chin and I'm like for God's sake, you took a Hippocratic oath and I'm asking you for some information and you can't even get an answer, straight answer out of people in the medical industry even, do you know what I mean? So. I just wondered what if what if any other people have got thoughts on this about the fluoride in milk and that's it. Anyway, before I get start getting on the soapbox, I'll, I'll shush. <laughs> well, I'm just killed the conversation. <laughs> no, 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 I thought you was going to jump in first. No, I was, I was uh, just on my keyboard with my mute on mic on mute. Um, Hello, I felt a little gone. As, as we're getting to the hour, um, I don't know what's happened to John, if he can hear us or not. So what we'll try and do is we'll, we'll play another tune coming up to the hour. And if we can't bring John in, we, we have got somebody else that wants to come in. So we've got uh, more guests coming after the tunes. It's a matter of importance to me that you be lucid and aware of what you're able to be. Since I was able to see the lack of limits, I've been infinite. And this is indiscriminate. And narcissistic arson isn't always meant to be destructive it's an art form this is my attempt to start the fire that makes you art more and logic less because logic since the dollar has been off of it i'm offering a sentence that could bring you back to sanity empathic but emphatically i plan to see you mastering the art of your existence so that everyone can benefit then on and on and fractally it blossoms into everything and mindfully we intervene i.e create reality i used to hate this word but now i know its definition and i've learned to trust my family See all seven billion. So I deem it time to DMT you all with my opinion. And I pray to my creators that just one of you will listen. Cause the light and divine truth was always inside you. I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you. You traveled through time to arrive at this line. And now you are in a vessel designed to invent and define truth. Illusion divides you. But you are the limitless find through which everything vibes through. And I'm here to remind you that you are the light and divine truth. It's always inside you. I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you. You traveled through time to arrive at this line, and now you are in a vessel designed to invent and define truth. Illusion divides you, but you are the limitless vibe through which everything vibes through. And I'm here to remind you that you are. I am the Illuminati of my own reality. I am not afraid of those who benefit from apathy. I am not a slave to any like entity or anything. Place. My mission as a cell is reconnecting yeah, us so. with everything. Inevitably, everything is bound to evolve. Because that's the nature of the fractal that we're also involved with. Revolving around a nucleus that nuclearly powers us. But I've comprised a theory that suggests we really power it. Power is the act of understanding what you're standing on. This is not the planet I was born from. No, the Mastodon is part of me. I'm partially a particle lost. Time and space, but I'll remember when they're blasting me off. And I am everything free from the pendulum i may never be but i control my darkness just enough to make a friend of it addendumless my bible is remembering the ultimate 
Then every channeled verse is holy text because we come from it. And every son and daughter is my bleeding hearted counterpart. So I will find the others and remind them that we have a heart. You're part of God whenever you remember, and I'm sore now, endeavoring forever on the quest of showing more how the light and divine truth was always inside you. I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you. You travel through time to arrive at this line, and now you are in a vessel designed to invent and define truth. Illusion divides you, but you are the limitless vine through which everything vibes through. I need only remind you that you are the light and divine truth which always inside you. I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you. You travel through time to arrive at this line, and now you are in a vessel designed to invent and define truth. Illusion divides you, but you are the limitless vine through which everything vibes through. And I'm here to remind you that you are God. I'm here to remind you that you are the light and divine truth. It's always inside you. And I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you. You travel through time to arrive at this line. And now you are in a vessel designed to invent and define truth. I need only remind you that you are God. I'm here to remind you that you are God. I'm only here to remind you that you are a magical turtle. Welcome back. And tonight, uh, I wanted it to be more of a free for all, so I've invited a few people on. And um, we've got John in the room. Hello. Yeah. We've got Gail in the room. Hello. Hello. We've got Hollywood in the room. Hello. Hello. And we've got Vin in the room. Hello. And, Hello. All. And a couple of things that were said in the break is what the subject matter tonight. So um, rather than talking about law, who would like to change the subject and talk about absolutely anything? First one to... Uh, Come up with one. Free energy, anti gravity. Brilliant. Off you go, John. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> well, it's been a, it's been a bit of a, an interest of mine ever since I found out about uh, Victor Schauberger and implosion about ten years ago. So uh, you know, I just keep in touch. I like to see what's going on in that regard because uh, they call it free energy. I mean, this, some of these are bad terms. You know, there's nothing free. It's how you use the energy. And there are ways of using energy, such as uh, permanent magnetic motors, uh, to turn a shaft. So if you can do what's called gate, the magnetic flux, you can actually turn a shaft and stick a generator on the end of it. And there's people out there doing amazing things with this. Um, if you go on Sterling D. Allen's site, or just put in the top five or top ten exotic free energy systems or exotic free energy devices, you get to his site. And you can follow the links to uh, Rossi in Italy and Kesh in Iran and Ralph Ring in America and a whole bunch of people and Coral Castle and all that. But the, uh, the, the idea remains that um, if you've got free, free energy and uh, gravity manipulation are hand in hand like electricity and magnetism, you just can't have one without the other. Or if you've got one, you'll get the other. And the implications for us are, are amazing. I mean, I just play around with these ideas. So, I mean, if you had an if you had a, a floating platform on which you built a house, for example, and somebody came knocking on your door making some claims, and one of the things it had to have is foundations. Uh, it's built on land on foundations, and they want something from you. You just press a button, and there's this sort of sort of graunching, sucking sound. The whole thing's now floating two feet above the ground, and you, and you just say, "What foundations?" And then you can disappear off to wherever you want to go. The ideas around it are so freeing. Um, I mean, Tesla was talking about this over 100 years ago, as we know. And he was talking about going pole to pole in a matter of minutes. So, you know, this, this whole thing that we go through with these thought forms to do with the law and all the rest of it, it's like reins on a horse. You know, the, you know, the more you can get on there, the more you can rein the horse in. But there's so many people who are exploring this. It's just phenomenal. And it seems like this year is like uh, the, 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 the gates are busting open. 
Um, there's another thing, actually. I mean, there's, there's something like, I don't know how many, there's thousands of uh, patents, for example, that were uh, brought out by Tesla, and they're under lock and key because apparently their property, this uh, property, these ideas have uh, been locked up for I don't know how long, probably 100 years or since one of the spaghetti supers got hold of it and decided they'd uh, buy the patent and put it under lock and key. And there's a great push around to get access to these pat- to these uh, so-called patents under lock and key because there's a bunch of information in there which uh, could deliver all kinds of things like holographs, uh, teleportation, a whole bunch of stuff. You know, some of it sounds like way out, you know, Star Trek stuff. And that's the other interesting thing is that when you have the idea or the consciousness to generate the idea, somewhere it starts to come into reality. And that's very, it's, so it's a very intriguing time. Um, so I just keep looking, you know, I, I buy little bits and pieces and have a fiddle about with the odd coil. And I just think, wow, this is this is amazing. But the uh, if you want to develop something, um, I mean, this is the wind jet I have with the uh, with the you might call the legal guys. It's like so you've got an expertise, or you might have some ideas to do with uh, gravity manipulation or free energy, and then you've got these other individuals from various corporations crawling all over your back, and you think, shit, I've got to learn all this stuff as well, the straw man stuff and the free energy. You've got to be you've got to be kidding me, you know. The, the the straw men or the uh, people who really thoroughly understand how, how all that works could be working with the guys who are doing the free energy. So at least they can make a bubble of protection where they can get their ideas going because then one will feed into the other because they've both got free in front of them. Anyway, those are, the, my, those are my kind of thoughts. Are you on about um, because like a lot of it's under patents and copyrights and things like that. So to use something that's being claimed to be owned by somebody else is is that what you're saying there's a difficulty in or yeah there's that aspect exactly i mean some of these patents are like 50 years old like they were originally developed I mean, what's a patent for it's to make sure the developer of the idea gets the full benefit from the idea in the terms of money well if that developer is long since departed this realm What's that about? Because those ideas are so freeing. They could be, they're amazing, you know, all kinds of ideas. Who knows what's in there? You could probably guess at it. But some of the technology, even if you own the patent, you can still develop. I mean, you just got to look at some of the ideas, how the Twin Towers came down, which has got very little to do with, uh, it's got more to do with beamed energy weapons. And everybody says, oh, we don't know how that happened. And Because if you own the technology, you can do all kinds of weird shit. You know, you can... Uh, I don't know, point a beam at somebody's chest or head and they keel over and they just say, oh, it's natural causes. Any kind of things, you know, maybe not quite as sinister as that. But so how do you crack a patent? You know, if it's just being controlled by some individuals or a corporation, but it could be of benefit to the whole planet, how do you winkle open that one? Well, it's not a benefit to the whole planet, really. It's not a benefit to the economic system, is it? Well, this is going to be, I mean, these, these are challenging ideas. I mean, this came out ages ago, I don't know who it was talking about, but we had a new propulsion system, and he said, I think it was Ralph Ring, it was Otis T. Carr, and Otis T. Carr worked with Tesla, and they developed, they were flying about in Apple Valley in, in America, you know, in the 50s and 60s, and, and that was the first we heard of the MIB, the men in black. And one of the arguments was, uh, we've got 4,000 people in working in propulsion in NASA, said they'd be shut down overnight. Yeah, well, that's the same argument when they brought in the internal combustion engine. What about all the farriers and all the horse breeders? You're going to put all them out of business. Um, If you want to get more up to date, you know, Maggie Thatcher shut down the coal coal industry in the UK. There were thousands of miners up north. You can still see the slag heaps, which is ski slopes now. What are they all doing? They're still up there doing some shit or other. So it's a spurious argument to say you can't develop it because it will change the economy right now. Bloody right it will, but which direction and benefit for whom? Well, um, it, it won't, if you had devi- energy devices that uh, would be a lot better for uh, the mass, unless if it was capitalised on, then like they're not going to release this sort of information so people could benefit themselves en masse when energy is one of the big things that does enslave people. People pay for electricity and um, they pay for gas. And well, that's, this is all true, but you, what, we do, what you're doing here is stating things as they are. 
And what I'm suggesting is there are, you know, for my little researches and my little three bed semi detached house with access to the internet and talk to a few people, these ideas are already here. You can't unthink an idea, you can't unhave an idea. So if you have one idea that uh, you've got to be in your a unit where it is buying gas or electricity, for a start, you know, who, who installed all the infrastructure and paid for it? You've got a third party who's installing meters. So you're paying them to look after your meter. What is it about? But you're right, exactly right. Some of this is to do with, uh, if you want to call it control, then control the energy. What are you going to tax? You're going to tax what people want. When windows came out for the first time on decent glass, they bloody taxed windows. And what did people do? They used to brick up their windows so they didn't pay so much tax. I mean, what is it about then? I mean, just uh, you just think, OK, so I've got me free energy. I can fly about wherever I want. I don't need anything. I can go from here to New Zealand or Kathmandu or Timbuktu at, at a whim. I might come back because I kind of like, you know, I was born in uh, in Britain, so I might like to come back to various places here and I call it my homeland. But they're no longer stuck by borders. And if you've got, if you could land anywhere and the soil was okay and the natives were friendly, you could fl- plant a few crops, who are you going to pay taxes to? Who are you, going to, you just don't need it. I mean, that is kind of freedom. That is amazing freedom because there are no borders. Apparently, uh, if you look at Grebenikov and his flying platform, platforms, so you can look him up, Grebenikov is a Russian entomologist, but he had shit flying about. That was solid state, allegedly. As American anti-gravity have been looking at that. So these ideas are out there. And rather than think about, well, you know, it's going to ruin various industries. Well, you know, it, maybe it'll open up various industries. It'll change things in a profound way because you're no longer stuck in your three-bed semi or stuck on two-dimensional grounds they call roads or whatever it is they do. The problem with it is when you get 3D, how the hell are you ever going to tax that? The one thing when they're flying, you can't track them. Apparently, when you're doing this sort of thing, you just see a moving dot of light. That's why people report so many moving dots of light. People are already doing it. There's just no incentive to tell anybody else for the reasons we've already talked about. So, I mean, all this is doing really is, you know, thoughts can be quite viral. Is the suggestion that it is possible. You can go and have a look and check it out. And the implications of it, I mean, you can sort that out in your own noodle. But uh, so you get a letter from the gas board saying, I understand you don't need gas anymore. You say, no, I don't. Thanks. Bye. Uh, do, you don't need electricity anymore. Yeah, no, no, no. Remove your meter. Thanks. Got no use for it. So what are they going to do? Big deal. If everybody did that, then we change, don't we? So hopefully gradually, not too suddenly. So some people are at the sort of forefront, like the first person who was building an internal combustion engine. And there's still people who are fixing horses around. You know, you sort of do a gentle switch over. But this is the year. There's just too much stuff out there. It's not just uh, Sterling D. Allen site. There are loads and again, like you're saying, it's to do with discernment. And discernment is when you've gone through enough stuff that you get a good bullshit filter on, isn't it? So what is this Sterling D. Allen site? Well, Sterling D. Allen, he's, uh, he's an enthusiastic amateur, but uh, it just turns out that he's... Uh, I can't, I'm not sure how he makes his bits of paper, but so he's got this site, it's called Peswiki. And it's it's a directory for, you know, anything free energy. I mean, there's a list down the side, right? all kinds of proofs, uh, anti-gravity, UFOs, uh, magnetic motors, alternative motors. There's not just gated magnetism. There's people like Rossi in Italy who've got uh, cold fusion on the go, which has been stomped on. And there's P- Pons and Flashman doing it, you know, like 30 years ago and were stomped all over. It was buried, you know, just the same story in a different way as uh, uh, running your car on water to that guy, Stan Mayer, who was poisoned, you know, over this... There's various interests that, you know, have, have a, a controlling interest in energy, not least petroleum, the black stuff, which is worth about, I think, all in all, about 12 trillion, if you include all the engines and the tires and, the, you know, and all the stuff you use, the consumable called petroleum in some form or another. So I like to buy it up and shut it down. So Mayo was offered a billion. He didn't accept it. And, you know, within a few weeks, he um, contracted some kind of poison and was horizontalized. So you um you said you said there was like things like patents for UFOs and and things like that, which is a handy time to bring Hollywood in because he was saying he wanted to bring bring something up on patents. Yeah, hey, that'd be excellent. Yeah. So uh, hello Hollywood, would you like to introduce? Hey Dom. Hi. Hey, hey guys. 
Listen, guys, it's, uh, what, one thing I would like to interject with, okay? We already have free energy. We've had free energy since time immemorial. What's, ha- what, what's happened is all these people run out and they pay for these patents and all that stuff. And look at the word patent, P-A, and tent. So you're paying for that tent, that pat tent, right? But what happens is the government regulates that, sees the patents, and then they say, oh, well, if this gets out to the masses, we can't do this. So we're going to stick with combustion and coal and all that stuff. But we've had free energy since the dawn of time. All you got to do is stick a turbine, a, a turbine and a water windmill, and you've got a prime mover. And we've, so we've had free power. What it comes down to, and it's rather quite simple as this, people have to stop supporting a criminal, crime and all, government enterprise. Okay, and the minute they stop paying taxes and they stop calling themselves citizens, which are per sons, per their son and their slaves, once we get off the the slavery ship known as the cited as Zen citizenship, we're all free, and we are the biggest hindrance to ourselves because we want to uh, support a government system that is tyrannical. So the minute we stop supporting this government um, system, which is tyrannical, we're we're free. It's just that simple. Like the Charter of Rights and Freedom said, hey, you have the right to enter in, become a Canadian, remain uh, Canadian, so stay a Canadian, and leave Canada. But I left Canada. I don't pay taxes anymore, nor do I support these people. And the minute we stop supporting them, free energy will be... It, it's been here for years. These people know this. We don't even need Nikola Tesla. Hollywood. We don't, um, I mean, it would it'd be nice to crack into the, yes, his patents and his brilliance and his genius, but there's other people out there already, like the Rod and Coil and all. The, it, it, dude, it, it's here. It, it's always dude, been. Is this uh, also a question of how far down the rabbit hole? Because the thing is, when you, you pay for food in supermarkets... All that food is taxed and uh, turned into a, a product for the, the commercial market. And um, even that supports a um, corrupt government at some kind of a level. So how far are you prepared to go before, you know what I mean? Because they control everything. They control the media. They control um, what is sold under what regulations to what countries? What's allowed here might not be allowed over that border, and it's the same worldwide. Create that divide. But Dom, let me stop you there, okay? Who do your rights come from? The government or the creator? Who, who does what come from? Who do your rights come from? Man, the government, or the creator? Um. The creator, uh, well, in my opinion, it would be rights as something that are written by the government, so they're given to you by the government. No, man, your rights come from the creator. My rights come from the creator, okay? People have two choices. You can follow mammon, mammon laws, which the Bible tells you, woe ye unto ye lawyers, take the A out, we got liars. What are politicians, politics? They're lawyers, for God's sake. It's time to get out of man, mammon laws, man-made laws, and, and, to start, and to start dealing with the creator's laws, which is natural law, at your all law. And when people, the, the minute people start going, see, what's happened over the years is this. The queen and all of her subjects and all that stuff, they've stolen so much property off the slaves, off the citizens, that they've controlled the land. We have to get back to ground, ground base. I'm an electrician by trade. We have to get back to ground, which is Mother Earth. That is called grounding, okay? And where does electricity flow? It flows to ground because you need the difference. The potential is the difference between two points. And when you die, you go back to ground. So effectively, what we have to do is take back Mother Earth. We have to give Mother Earth rights. Not rights come from the Creator, not not man. My rights come from the universe and Mother Earth. So it is above, so it is below. And the minute people start reclaiming dominion over their own lives and stop citing themselves then as citizens, which are persons, which are corporate uh, uh, corporations, 
the faster we are free, the faster this whole government entity dies. It's like if you don't want to support Walmart, stop shopping there. How fast will Walmart dissipate? And that will allow us to create more jobs for ourselves. So it's, it's all rather simple. People have to look within. We're always looking for the answers when the answers have been here all along. You are the answer. I am the answer. I'm not even a Bible thumper, but, you know, people are running around going, well, Jesus is going to save us. No, in the Bible, metaphorically speaking, Jesus said, ye are God, and may Christ be in you and also in you. Lift up your hearts are no small words. And it's time we start acting like gods as opposed to slaves. We've had free energy. Stick a turbine. Get a, get a turbine and a generator and, and uh, get a propeller and you have a prime moving shaft. And you've got free power. It's it, It's been here. We just have to... I, I think the biggest thing uh, myself... I almost don't want to put it this way, but I'm going to put it this way. The biggest thing I've found in life is everybody's looking for the answers outside themselves when we are the answers. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Um, may, may I interject? Of course, free, free flow. Um, re well, re regarding rights... This is a, a, a tricky subject for a lot of people, and my research has shown me that we just don't have rights. They don't yeah. exist. I mean, you, you did ask what rights are, but if you look if you look at that question more in depth and actually look at the, look at look at it from a factual perspective, we don't have rights. They don't exist. They're nothing more than, than uh, an abstraction of of your mind. If you believe you yeah. have rights, fine. You can believe you have rights. It doesn't mean they exist. I can then, prove right now that everybody on this call now has life, liberty, and property. Then, I, I, yep. I'm sorry, I, I, I have to contradict that, okay? Because I'll tell you right now, I have all the rights in the world. I told Canada, I was once a citizen, I said, through the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, I am no longer a citizen, okay? I do not, not Nobody's have a citizen, you, ne you never was to begin with. Sorry, but... No, but when you agree to a contract falls under the rules of common law, if you and I agree that we are in a contract on the citizenship, then you're on the ship. You can't have rights when you deal with cons and contracts. And the minute everybody jumps off that ship, I'm a sovereign Squamish government uh, diplomatic linguistics advisor. So when people say, well, my rights come from man, no, 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 no. Your rights come from the creator. And if you, if you don't want to have any rights, you start getting into obligatory contracts with the government, then you have no rights. You only have benefits, services, and privileges. I follow my heart, which is natural law. If something in my heart, my magnetic energy, because we're all energy, right? That's all we are, right? I follow my heart. And if my heart says that is good for the benefit of myself and everybody else, I'm good to go. That's called natural law. I do not follow man-made laws, rules, regs, stats, and acts, because they're all just an act of bullshit. And the problem is, the, the, faster, the faster people start claiming their rights and saying, whoa, I am not a slave on your ship, and I'm going to follow natural law, the better off this world will be. Nobody's using my tax-paying dollars to go murder my fellow Palestinians, my fellow Iraqis, Afghanistan, whatnot, because I don't pay taxes. And I have I have videos, I e even have certified court documents through the Attorney General's office letting them know that I have a peace treaty with these people and I've got nothing against their government system. But you look at the word system, and I spell it like this, C-Y-F-T, it's a SIF. And what flows through systems? Shit. So the minute we start taking responsibility for our actions, the faster off, the faster off, A, they stop using people's taxpaying dollars to murder innocent civilians overseas, drones to kill innocent children overseas, and the faster we stop supporting that system, because we've established what flows through a system, the faster the world is free. And that's, that's my only dilemma with a lot of people. They're going, well, my rights come from man. No, your rights don't come from man. Your rights come from the energy that that gifted you the experience of acquiring a body. So 
So why would you allow somebody else to control that energy is, is totally perplexing to me. Well, and the minute people and the minute people get off that ship, because you can't have rights when you're on a ship and somebody's got a gun near your head, you have to come back to Mother Earth where the universe loves you and so it is so above, so it is below. They're not they're not small words. Even the, the Lord's Prayer says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because there is no division. And we run around and we want to be possessed by our possessions. Okay? And you come into this world with nothing and that's how you're going out. But everybody has this attitude. Well, if I don't get mine, somebody else will. And it's really, really greatly disturbing when all these Bibles whether they be Muslim, Hindu, Koran, whatever, I don't care. They espouse similar information to take control of your free will and act of God and become a man and get off the ship, which is dealing with the government at all costs. Okay, right? well, I mean, just, just going back, back to rights, if I can, I, I can prove right now that everybody in this call has got life, liberty, and property. You've all got life no. you're talking to me. You've no, all got liberty because no. nobody's sticking a gun to your head, you know, forcing you to be here tonight. You've all voluntarily come here, so you have liberty. You have property because I can presume that all of you have got internet connections, so therefore you must probably have computers that very likely belong to you. So I could, you know, I, I assume you, you know, you're wearing clothes, so I can, I can make a case that you, you all have life, liberty, and property right now. I, I now, don't in case you have a you have a right to life, liberty, and property. Now, whether you look at this from a religious point of view or not, and you want to claim God gave you these things, the only thing you can prove in that in that respect, if you want to believe God did it, God gave you life, liberty, and property. He never gave you a right to it. He just simply gave you it. So, Vin, here's my question. Okay, you yep. can say you can blow holes through everything I did. Blow holes through it. This computer I'm speaking on right now, yes, I may have I may have worked for this and purchased it, but it is not mine. Okay, nothing is mine. Nothing in this world is mine. My body's not even mine. If somebody wants to come up and put a gun to my head, and the fact well, there you go. So if that's the case, then you can't prove you have a right to life, can you? If somebody oh, can take your life that easy, but then how can you claim you have a right then, to it? Then I have a yeah. right because the energy that is me. Came into this world. It, you could you could shoot me today. The government could come up to me and say, "We don't like the fact that you're not a Canadian and that your rights come from natural law, the laws of the jungle and the Creator." And they can shoot me. And I have news for you, brother. My spirit, my energy, which will never, 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 ever be contained, will always come back. Try to kill energy. You can't, my man. You can't do it. My body is just a vehicle for my energy to drive it. That's well, all it is, right? Driving your car without that. your body. But, I mean, when we're talking about this, just, just, just this basic issue of rights, you claim rights aren't man-made, and you're claiming the, create, you know, the creator made them. Well, what facts are there to back any of that up? The only what thing we can fact is something that, sorry, rights are something that people believe. It comes from their minds. No. You can't You're prove right. it comes from anywhere else. The only thing we can prove it comes from is somebody's mind. It's something they believe. So it's a belief. Ben, so you're, stuck, you're, stuck in, you're stuck in a tangible world. The minute you get out of it, you're free. If, if people want to sign up and they want to be slaves, they shall be slaves. I am no slave. I am a master unto myself and everybody in the world that I espouse love to. I am a servant of the Creator. Whichever, whatever people conceive that Creator to be, life is life, and you can never kill the spirit. And that's, that's my biggest thing. People are going, oh, well, uh, people are always telling me what to do. No, people have allowed themselves to be told what to do. Nobody tells me nothing. I have police files with the Edmonton Police Services. I have, I have files with thesis. I have files with the Government of Canada, Stephen Harper's office. I'm a member of the sovereign Squamish government, and everybody knows that my rights come from Creator. I will never allow another man to tell me what to do in my world. And when I think people that, that, that drives it right home for me, that, you know, you're right in every way. Um, I think it all starts 
with each with with each of us. It's it's like you say, it's it's self. It's entirely self. And the way to beat the system is peaceful non-compliance, isn't it? You know, learn don't feed the beast that enslaves us, and and don't harm anyone. Like you say, like you just said, you know, agree with all you've just said. But I just think for the for the people who are less educated or not aware yet. You know, there's a lot of um, uninformed people out there and trying to reach them is a task and a half because they can be overwhelmed, overwhelmed so much that there's so much information that you've got to learn that they just close off and just can't deal with it to process it all at once. So, like, I mean, I listen to Max Speed and he's like, you know, he's, he's, he's a guy who really settles my mind and I'd recommend anyone listen, listen to him to get peace of mind in how to... Hollywood. Live in all this madness around us without having a mental breakdown. Because to be sure, people are so despondent with the way the government and tyranny is all suppressing everybody. Nobody's nobody's finding that they're angry, but they're not finding the fight to say, no, we're not going to take this anymore. You know, it's like, what's going on? I look around me at people and I want to shake them. I want to shake them at the tills when they've got like five bottles of Coca-Cola full of aspartame and the kids' eyes are rolling and they're going, oh, I've got these on offer. And it's like, what are you doing? Why are people so missing, or misinformed? It's because the same people who sell media and sell and make the pro- make the programs, bring most people through TV, the same people are, are, are putting all this crap on the shelves to make people sick and you know despond you know to, to keep people ill to keep them despondent and at the same time while they're brainwashing them or bedazzling them with football and uh, the latest next thing or the x factor or this that the other they're not paying attention to like you say the wars that are getting forced apparently in our name these people are supposed to be representing us supposed to be governing us by consent None of us have consented to this, have they? And I've just noticed a funny thing when I walked through my local village just before. There was a shop, a charity shop, and it said on the front of it, Mali, we, we change your clothes into their water. And I thought to myself, hang on, the US uh, going to war with the French and attacking Mali, yet we're sending, we're giving our clothes for the English to turn our clothes into money for water for them, yet Cameron obviously justifies this attack in Mali. Do you know what I mean? Just saying how messy the government is and how, how busy they are in shafting us all and at the same time keeping us all down by, with the food, the medications and television and no one's paying attention to really what they should be paying attention to and that's paying attention to themselves and not feeding the system by not buying their shit no more. Anyway, that's me off my soapbox, Don. <laughs> No, it's a uh, pleasure to hear anyone have a rant. Um, <laughs> I just needed to, I just needed to let that steam off. I mean, everything goes hand in hand with with what. Um, sorry, I didn't get your name. The guy who's just speaking then. Uh, it, it's right. We, you know, we, what are we going to people? I mean, this the true fair community, if you call it, um, is getting vilified at the moment with all these, you know, these presenters who were up there making out. They put deliberate mistakes up there so that we point them out, like people who notice things, point them out, and then they laugh at us and say, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, or there's this, there's that, the other. We're all getting vilified, yet it's, what do we do about it, you know? What do we Gail, do about Gail, I'll tell you what we can do, okay? It's called consumerism. Consume. Con. You, me. Okay? We have to stop being con. Or con, S U E M E. Oh, I'm not con. Conned. I'm, I'm not conned at all. I just, I don't buy into the system now. I've changed my lifestyle around in the last two, three years proper. Uh, I might still use the system because I have to, to to get by in life, but I don't buy anything that is, uh, you know, like mass produced with all these chemicals in, a totally accrued things from scratch and everything. And I think it's a simple thing that people can learn to do, but society as it is dehumanises people, so they're too busy getting ready meals, or too busy in a rush, too busy to even stop, 
and actually think no one no one is getting them in to stop and that's because the system has got people yeah. running around yeah. like rats in a cage. You just hit the nail on the head. You're not into being a consumer, okay? And that's where change starts. Change, you you just totally, uh, you, uh, you've been talking about exactly what I've been trying to tell people. Stop acting like cons. Stop, yes, maybe you still need a job, you have children to support. I understand that, and, and that's beautiful. The minute people stop shopping at Walmart, the faster Walmart goes down. The faster people stop buying pharmaceuticals. Yeah, and then it'll mend itself, but it's like people as well yeah. need to rehumanize themselves because a lot of people are not really into it. They don't get the time anyway to start growing on an allotment or, you know, just start doing things like, say, say you go to work, all the money you get, instead of paying it back into the system by buying their, their trap, put it into, like, growing your own stuff and making your quality of life better so that you don't need to keep, you know what I mean? That way you're taking the money out of the system, you're not putting it back, but whatever you do spend the money on, it's going on like building that new, con not conservative, but building stuff that makes you more self-sufficient in even the smallest way, it makes a difference, in my opinion. Going back, going back, like um, you're, you're saying with Walmart, if you don't put any energy their way, and pe if people done that en masse, then they, they wouldn't be there because, like, they need people's energy to go their direction. And yeah. it's much the same as what quite a few of us are looking into with the legal system and the banking system. And that that is the reason that I recognise all that corru corruption um, and I, I choose not to use it. Somebody was um, having a debate with me the other day about um, the fact that I don't use the monetary system, so therefore... Like, I don't tell other people they shouldn't use it, but if you didn't use it en masse, then, like, that would be people free from that monetary system. And it's, they've created this system so tight that how can anybody seriously operate in this world that they've built, the matrix, without using the name Every day, people have to abide by their system, whether it will be by using the name because they, they're entering the benefit system or they have rent to be paid or they they're even got a bank account. Now, can, can people live without these things that are controlling people? Yeah, but yes, there's solutions out there like totally. the energy Absolutely. systems and things like that, but can people actually step away from this en masse so it can't... Because I, I, I can step away, but how, how can the mass population do this? I couldn't. So for the people who can't, who are sort of halfway, who've got, who, who've got a house, who've got kids or, or things like that, they can do smaller things within their capabilities, can't they? But for somebody like you, Tom, you can, you can go and live totally off the grid like you have done, haven't you? You know, you, it, it, some people can just take to it. I've given it a go, but I've, I've given anything a try from, like, trying to do my own land claims to living in bits of woods to sofa surfing to hitting the festival circuits. Tried anything to learn different things step by step of how to live outside of using money and that system of rules that I don't want to abide to because I can see that they're only enslaving people for, through fear for commerce. And that's not for me. I want to be as free from that corruption as possible. And to be free from that wouldn't be attacking that system, saying, well, I've got the right to do this because I'm sovereign, or I've got the right to do that, or whatever it may be, if you're attacking that system, you're giving it energy. No? Yeah. Yes? Sorry, I just, Great, I just don't don't see it no more. I don't even I don't watch T V. I haven't had a television in like five years and my life uh, is so without them alpha waves, I mean even my daughter and my daughter I, I watched, you know, when you're a mother or a father, you witness it, the change in what the uh, the me you know, the brainwashing box in the living room actually does to you. Children, how they change and I've I've witnessed it with kids. I mean my daughter ended up email and all that, you know, I've been through the works with my daughter, but all down to the TV and once I smashed it up, got rid. It's to tell live vision 
and yeah. programmed, so and they yeah. wash your brain with the soap. Well, the brain waves start waking up when there's nothing else blocking the um, the thought waves. Your brain, the creativity, I just saw sort of come back in her over about two or three years now. She's heading to uni, hopefully in September, things will change. But, you know, people are too scared to let go of the TV. They'll be like, I've got to have me send this fix or bad with me. You know, it's just so... There's many addictions. People don't how much that TV is lying to them. There's many addictions, and I see That's the, the monetary system. Drug industry, Don. The, the, the electronic money. drug industry. Gail. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I, I see the monetary system as an addiction. People need it, and um, it's like when people say, "Well, you need money to live," and it's so far from the truth because it's not money that has created anything. Man created money to enslave people. And I just see this as we, we, the solutions are there. If if we can learn to live with each other rather than um, worrying about yeah. how this state is um, enslaving people, I know people up and down the country that are really trying to do stuff now. And yeah. a few years ago, it, it wasn't this amount of people in the numbers. I'm very silent. Yeah, I'm listening. So, uh, I'm just still looking for solutions out there and um, welcome at any sort of uh, angle that they may came, come from. But as, as you can see, you've got some people in the world that think that they've got rights. And I, I can't say that rights are God-given because if... In the same paraphrase that you said that Jesus said, ye are all gods, then if ye are all gods and I am a god, then I create everything that I perceive to be real. Therefore, yes, I am the creator. And I, yes. I gave these rights. And your rights come from you. You. You and you alone. That's because ye are gods. You just hit the nail on the head. And all the answers, all the answers out there have already been within ourselves. They're called pro within ourselves. They're called pro found because we've been indoctrinated into the public school system. I mean, mm -hmm. people send their kids to school. Fish hang out in schools. They send their children there for lessons, less on, right? Well, I want to be a moron. You know, it's just time for us to wake up because the answers are already within us. And being the fact that you are a god, that's where your rights come from. Only you can decide which right you're willing to accept and what you're not willing to accept. It's just that simple. So why people want to get into a contract that stipulates, oh, well, I have to pay taxes. Well, only a fool would want to do that. I mean, it, I'm not saying everybody's a fool. Some of us have been so indoctrinated to the system, but, it, but, it, but it's just that simple. The answers lie within us, and the faster we stop supporting supporting a corrupt government, the faster these monkeys are down and out, and the faster these people will find themselves in jail because people are going to start acting like God, and massive arrests will be made on a mass scale, saying, I'm sorry, but I'm not about to allow you, whatever government official you are, to go and kill my neighbors. Right? They've been doing this for years. I mean, they kill us in the grocery store shelves, for God's sake. Look at the word grocery. You take out the RE and you got gross. It's like people want to shop at a pharmacy. You take the, uh, you, you look at farm, you take the P out, and you've got harm. Harm at C, S E A. It's just time, it's just time for people to stop shopping at pharmacies, stop buying gross stuff at groceries, right? It's time to get back to Mother Earth and grounding ourselves and start growing our own food and vegetables and we can trade trade in rocks, stones, chickens, love. That's just just that simple. It is amazing how um, humanity is foraging off of metal shelves. The food is coming out of pla plastic packaging. There isn't eye contact on public transport. Um, so it is amazing to see how they've created this control through their their think tanks the the well the way i see it is the monetary system 
is uh, one of the big clinchers that enslaves people. And then you've got the birth certificate, which is um, tied to that system. And you've got um, a body of rules, the statutes and acts. This is all pieces of paper that people are being enslaved by. That's all it is. And it's the, the very small, minute few that are controlling the population just by creating these rules and holding all, all of the currency that they created in the first place. And the more that these people use it, the, the harder it becomes because of the way it was created the, with interest tied to it. It's just, um, just not on. It's not, not for humanity. That's right. That's right. And it's, it, you know, it, it's, that, that, that's the whole thing, you know. Uh, you, you just hit the nail on the head, Dom. The, the, the faster everybody realizes that who holds the power, everybody's always putting this power. I don't even like the word power. I like the word love. From the heart, natural law, take the end out at your all at your all service. That's what I am now. I, even my body, uh, theoretically, I mean, uh, you know, I can't even claim ownership to my body because it's owned, something to be owned is against everything that natural law has taught us, right? And once people get back to that at your all law, at your service, then we are no, no longer serve ants. We are no longer defend ants. And we've all established who ants defend? They defend the queen ant. We don't need these oligarchies, these the, the uh, Rome. I mean, even even the Catholic Church in Rome, they walk around. You go to the church, and it's greatly disturbing to always see a dead man on a cross because these people promote death. Why don't they promote the resurrection of the Christos flowing through our spines and elevating our pineal glands and us seeing the light? But we've just been so indoctrinated. And the faster we wake up our neighbors, the, the better off we all are and the better off we are. And it's like Gail said earlier, and you said too, the minute we start assuming responsibility for our own actions, never mind what the rest of the world is doing, but change starts with us. Not a million people, not a billion people. It starts with us. It starts with me, you, Dom, Gail, Ty, you know, Ben, thought. So, uh, backyard Bob the whole nine yards. So um, that is uh, truly the case. And um, when you can like see, Dan like Dan Sorry, Dom. Sorry. Well, when you when you can see the mass populations uh, of of the population out there, and usually it's your loved ones that don't want to wake up to this information. Um, what 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 are you to do? Because um, I. I actually do look at this and think, okay, they've got control of every angle of it, even um, protests and all of that sort of market just looks like people are capitalizing on the so-called truth movement and protests and it's become a very niche market. So yeah. if, if these governments, governmental bodies are getting in from them angles and they're manipulating every side, it's like makes me question what actually is going to happen in in due time, and what are we bringing about to cause that? Where we've looked at the information, like have you seen that document that's floating about in Canada, uh, Meads versus Meads? Uh, you're talking. You're talking. You're talking to. Uh, you're talking to the rules of the court, man. And that's me. Uh, which which and guy are you on the document? Uh, well, I'm not in the document oh, see, right. because they won't see. I've taken my intellectual property back. My my name, Mark Simser, Randolph Simser, is a common law autograph trademark name. Yeah. And and it's been and it's been certified not only once but twice through the Attorney General's office and through the Court of Queen's Bench. So people are not going to dare mention my name in articles. How dare you touch my my intellectual property? You see where I'm going with this? So that article's got something to do with you, then? Oh, it's got, well, yeah, even the part where the judge says, hey, people, if you don't like being governed by Canada's rules, well, leave Canada's jurisdiction. But who do you think brought that about, even before that judge even put that Meads versus Meads out? It started with me. There's only two people I know in Canada who, you know the pursuit of happiness in the American Constitution, uh, Dom? 
No, carry on. Okay, well, it's called the PER, P-U-R, I call it P-E-R, suit. It's a lawsuit of happiness. And unfortunately, if you want to be happy, you have to sue your way out of the government system, right, to be happy. And me and um, uh, another uh, one of our, uh, our, our government leaders, uh, C.M. Capilano um, and Irene Moss, we've all did this. And that's the pursuit known as happiness. We said, listen, we want to be happy. And unless we sue you guys to tell you guys that we're getting off your ship because we're land lovers and we want to follow natural law, that's where our rights come from. Rights cannot come from man-made create, uh, uh, created law. And we, we followed the pursuit of happiness. We said, listen, we're tired of your system. You kill my neighbors. You not only steal from me, you steal from my loved ones, you steal from people overseas, and the buck stops here. So you, you've actually actively been trying this stuff out within their system? Oh, try it. Not only try it, I've lived it. I've had the mental health assessment team come to take me away in straitjackets. I've been arrested, and ever since I did the, pro, did the process properly, everything stopped because if they were to do anything to me they know outright that i'm not a slave on their ship and if once again if they do anything to me well my any any spilling of my blood falls on their conscience not mine this is see where i'm going with this everything i've did dom i've lived i've got certified court documents i've got witnesses i've got calls from the police Edmonton, uh, the, the Edmonton uh, policy services, police services saying, here's your file number just in case I run into the police. I've already dealt with a couple officers. I, I, I even once bought stolen, uh, two stolen guitars by mistake. I had witnesses to that. I mean, I didn't intentionally, you know, go out and go looking for stolen merchandise. It was just a fluke of nature. The officers came over. They were as nice as pie with me. The officer said, "Well, basically, you know, you are you are in effect under a common law, a common law rule where you should not be in possession of stolen goods." He said, "But I truly believe that you did not know this, and uh, you've got witnesses." And uh, I even guided the officers. I worked with these people rather than showing aggression and telling these people, "No, I have to look at these officers like I am you and you are me. There is no separation. There is no division." Unfortunately, if Barack Obama is killing somebody overseas, well, I'm responsible for that, too, because what I see in others also exists in myself. So we have to take actions, and these actions, even though, say, Barack Obama is sending drones over to kill innocent children overseas, and what I see in him exists in me, well, I can only be responsible for my actions. And all I can send that Barack Obama and Bush and Cheney and Harper and all these guys is love and hope that they come back to love, not evil. This and is why, I, I, this is why um, there's, there's many people out there that are really actively getting out there doing things and, and finding solutions. And also know that the whole pitfalls of it all and how they'll come for you. And uh, I mentioned earlier, when you're playing this game of own a ship, and they, they created this rule, this game, this maritime game, where they will take all of the products off of you if you don't comply. And this is how they've been doing it time and time again, because they haven't taught us the rules on how to play. But there are many people from many, many different angles um, taking the, the system apart because they're sick of it. They're not just saying, I'm sick of the system, but there's nothing I can do anymore. People are actually getting up there and really giving it a go and trying to push them solutions out onto other people saying look I'm just one man doing this look what I can do by myself imagine if you done that and empowered yourself that's right and and you just hit the nail on the head like why all these people want to run out and protest a protest uh, a government system that is broke is beyond my scope I wouldn't waste my time protesting I just simply say listen I'm not shopping at Walmart and I'm not shopping with you, the government of Canada and the United Kingdom and the Vatican. And it I, stops I, right I, there. I totally hear you there because when you're protesting or joining a group and putting your energy that way, they, you're actually feeding them. Because even with court battles, you're, you're going in and out of court. And these courts are owned by the Crown. 
So therefore, who are you giving energy to? Uh, that's why I suggest people go out there and just do something. Because at the end of the day, if, if, if you win or have a solution or, or get something that has a positivity to it, great. But if they come and take it apart, uh, they were going to do that anyway. And you're not going to learn from sitting there going, well, there's nothing I can do about it. But you get up there and you do something, you really can make a huge amount of change by yourself. Yeah. Well, that's just it. You know, um, uh, what was I going to say? So, so are you guys switching over to another podcast? Um, what we're going to be doing is, as we're coming up to the hour, I may as well, um, you, you're all welcome to stay on after the hour, apparently. But what, what I may as well do at this point is wind the show down to a close and thank all of you for being here and let people know Great what... Fun, fun, crafting. And also let people know what will be going on on Wednesday night. Wednesday night, we'll be talking to a guy who is a Labour MP who um, claims his mother is a nine-foot green alien. And later on in the evening, we'll have somebody else who claims to have had an experience that he can't fully remember. So it should be quite an interesting <laughs> show on Wednesday night. But um, as we're winding up, we may as well cut into a tune. And um, after the hour, we'll have the Bob's Backyard crew in talking all kinds of waffle. So join us again at nine.